Hey, good morning everyone. TrackMan44 here. Today, we're going to uh, go about the business of trying to figure out if we can install a third function valve. This is a, an MX5400 Kubota. Uh, it's got an LA1065 uh, loader on it. Kubota doesn't have an OEM specific third function valve for this particular machine, but uh, what they do have is a Land Pride, I think, is either a subsidiary or at least is owned by Kubota or something or some connection. Land Pride has a very compatible third function valve specifically for this particular tractor and for the 6000. They vary somewhat between the cab model and, uh, and the rollover, the ROPS model. And fortunately for me, the ROPS model was uh, actually cheaper. So we're going to go ahead and take the loader off of this thing. I think that's the first thing that says the instruction book. Okay, now you guys that follow me just a little bit know I work on mostly old tractors and have old tractors. So this is all new to me. I'm, I'm learning as we go along here. To relieve your pressure, just move it into every position. And that'll relieve all the pressure off of your connections right here. Then these should just pop right off. Make sure you have a nice clean rag there because you're going to get a little oily. There's three basic styles. There's a there's a ball, there's a poppet, and then there's a flat face. But these are poppets on this guy here. So guys, what we have here on the table is the Land Pride full kit for installing a third function valve. Over on the left hand side is the actual uh, trigger that's actually going to go onto the loader control up there in place of that knob. That's going to have the electrical stuff to it. Here's your solenoid bank right here. And then uh, this is your different, uh, looks like poppets, flat faces, maybe even balls in there, I don't know. And also protective covering. That's going to be for uh, all the hoses, of course. And then a series of brackets. I don't know yet which ones, if all, are not are going to be used and of course the hoses and everything and everything looks to be clearly marked if not at least it's identifiable and like I said I ain't no expert at this so we're gonna learn this together probably make a mistake or two but we're gonna get this thing on to get her functioning if not today we'll get her done tomorrow the next thing seems to be disconnect the bolts that hold the uh, control valve in place and we're gonna get ready to uh, to install this right here this is gonna be the plate that secures the actual solenoid uh, the solenoid package so these are going to come off from here and then this is going to rebolt back on and I assume this is going to be underneath I sure wish the missus was here she could actually lend me a little bit of a hand here at least you got one bolt on here to hold it for a second now it'd be a lot easier to get that second one in there. Look at that. An extra pair of hands would come in handy though, there is no doubt about it. So we'll get those tightened back up and then we'll uh, figure out what the next order is. Now the next part, it's not too awfully bad, but you have to understand what an ORB fitting is. That's an O-ring boss. In other words, it's a, I think it's a non-tapered thread and it seals with an O-ring. So you don't really smash them down super, super tight. So you get it the angle that it wants. It's got a lock nut then and you tighten your lock nut down and to hold it into place. Uh, they're clearly marked exactly which fittings go where and you can kind of get a rudimentary idea of the angles that you need to go. Hopefully that's going to be okay. But if not, they're very easily adaptable. You just loosen that lock nut just a little bit, adjust your angle and tighten that lock nut back down. Uh, and that's all there is to it. We're about ready to go ahead and install this over there on that bracket. And then I guess we're going to figure out where the hoses go. I have a little bit of familiarity with uh, hydraulics. Not a tremendous amount. But the JIC, it's a flare fitting. But if I remember correctly, it's a 37 degree flare. It's not a standard 45 degree flare like we're used to on uh, gas lines uh, or on plumbing lines. It's going to be a 37 degree, much sharper angled flare fitting and they do not interchange. The JICs do not interchange with standard plumbing or gas fittings at all. So those ORB on one end, which is the O-ring boss, seals with the O-ring and then 37 degree flare on the other end and that's what these hoses are going to have on the inside of them. On the ends of them is going to be the uh, the male JIC fittings that will be compatible with uh, what we've installed on the valve. This is the solenoid bank attached to the control valve bracket. The angles, like I said, may be off just a little bit on these guys here, but I think as long as it clears, I think we're in good shape. Pretty self-explanatory out here. 
You can see the bulkhead fittings right here, which is a ORB fitting on the other side by JIC here. And then, of course, the flat face uh, will go on to the front of the ORB, sealing that up good and tight. And then, of course, the hoses will come here, route through this over here. There'll be a bracket or a clamp that holds them in place right there, and then on back towards the uh, rear of the tractor. The completed assembly is all very self-explanatory, very secure mounting process in two locations, which is really pretty cool. And they just rest right here. And if you look down here, I still have the um, ORB to JIC adapters that actually go on here. Well, this is not a sales uh, venture for, uh, for land pride, but let me tell you, this is uh, very impressive. They've got it very well thought out and very well, uh, very well documented. Probably could have done a little better for the instructions on, for people that are totally unfamiliar with the terminology. Now that we've got the uh, the bulkhead fittings and the uh, the bulkhead mount and everything on the actual loader itself and those hoses mounted and ready to attach to uh, to the, the control valve here, it's time to start removing the existing components off of the existing pump. Now this is the actual pump right underneath the right floorboard of the 5400 and this fitting right here is the one that supplies the oil to the control valve up here and we must remove that particular line. It may be just a little difficult to get in there so you want to use a backup wrench because you don't want to put undue strain on that ORB that's actually going into the valve housing. So I've got the 22 millimeter on this and I'm going to set it looks like maybe a 19 on the actual ORB fitting. But we'll be back as soon as they get that disconnected and have you a tray ready right here so that you can catch that oil because you know there's going to be oil that's going to drain out of that hose once you get it disconnected from the control valve. Next up we'll take the appropriate hose and connect to that center that center port off the control valve and bring that all the way down to the newly installed third function valve. Remember earlier I might have said to not necessarily tighten these guys up because as long as you leave this lock nut loose on that JIC fitting, you can adjust the angle. Now I had this angle pointing out here way too far. It needs to point in inside so that that hose can more easily be connected to it. This being a female JIC, 37 degree flare, it requires absolutely no kind of Teflon tape or any kind of sealant on the actual surfaces of the joint uh, or of the connection. By nature of the machining on the JIC 37 degree or on the 45 degree flare fitting for plumbing or for gas work, there is no sealant that goes on these. Again, let me stress, don't apply excessive force or pressure to that ORB fitting behind that flare. Always use your backup. And this is a 19, uh, 19 millimeter that it requires on these larger fittings. But, hey, another thing to point out is that you need to be ready with metric wrenches and also standard wrenches. The componentry that comes in the land pride uh, valve kit itself uh, seems to be standard. <laughs> the, the fittings are standard, whereas the fittings that are on the actual uh, tractor from the factory are, uh, are metric. The last step as far as preparing the hydraulics is concerned, you take the last hose you have available and attach it to the, uh, to the pump outlet port here. Bring that up here to the third function valve on the P port in the back, which obviously stands for pump. And for what it's worth, the fitting on the end of the Land Pride supplied hose is a 7 8 fitting, whereas the original ones that actually came off are 22 millimeter. But you still need a 19 millimeter backup when you tighten this down. Oh, hey, and I forgot to bring up another point. Uh, when I was talking about the JIC flare fittings, the only thing that's required is a little bit of the oil that's in the system, like in this case hydraulic oil, to lubricate those threads so that they spin on easier. If you go to squeezing them on or twisting them on and they go to squeaking and squealing, uh, you definitely need to back them off and just put a drop or two of whatever oil is in the system. Refrigeration oil, if it's refrigeration of course, um, and then also hydraulic oil, if it happens to be hydraulic like this particular case here. That's all that's required on those fittings. At this point, all the hydraulic connections are completely done. Everything is tightened. The electric kit consists of a wiring harness and a replaceable knob that goes in on the end of your control arm, up top on your control valve. It's just attached by these two set screws right here with lock nuts on the set screws. So pull the old handle off and slip this guy on, tighten her down. Now with the push button control, installed with the buttons to the left of the tractor. The picture in the book actually shows cutting a notch out of the boot, literally cutting a portion of the side of the boot out in order to wrap the wiring harness through. What I did 
is I just opted to just cut a little slice down on two sides in an area large enough to allow the fuse, which you can see, they actually have a 5 amp fuse built into the wiring harness. So I cut that notch large enough for the fuse to pass as well as for the three Molex plugs or molded connectors one at a time. So that allowed me to get it down where I hope a couple of zip ties tied around there will maintain uh, the integrity of uh, snow or water or excessive debris getting in there. But that remains to be seen. Well, so far it's not looking the best in the world, but uh, at least it's better in my estimation than a great big old gaping hole. But we can slide this down on here, slide that on. We'll run these in with a set screw. I think it takes an Allen wrench to tighten this up and then the lock screws or the lock nuts. You may be able to adjust this to your own personal preference whenever you get to using the tractor. A slight change in angle might be what you'd prefer, I don't know. Tighten up your lock nuts with a half inch. Then we're going to go ahead and ferret this guy right down into that opening. It doesn't look too terribly bad, but like I said, instead of cutting a gaping hole down in here, I liked it just notching it like that right there. But now that that's done, all we have to do is figure out where to install these guys right here. And I would think the lengths and the color coding has something to do with it, but I still have yet to look at the instructions. If you take a look, I've got the uh, third function valve wired in. There's two of them that go to the two solenoids. Then you've got a main power supply that you have to tie into the uh, tractor's main wiring harness. And it clearly shows the picture to where that power supply is routed right out of the main wiring harness with a, a white Molex plug on it. If you take a look at this guy here, this is the Molex plug, the female receptacle or the female plug that comes on the Land Pride third function valve. Whenever you unbuckle this, at least on the 5400, the key to look for on that main wiring harness will be a stub sticking out with the white tape on it. That's going to indicate, like this guy here's got the white tape on it, it's going to indicate that that's probably the thing that you, uh, that you want. So now all I have to do is route this the correct way, zip tie it, and then plug it in, and I'll be, uh, I'll be wired in ready to test. Once the Molex plugs are all connected, you have to uh, check and make sure the solenoid's energized. But also I wanted to indicate the very last thing that you have to put on will be this protective lower shield that necessitates pulling those quarter by 20 three inch long bolts back out and then reattaching them with that plate in place. That protects those solenoids on that far side over there from the toe of your shoe, knocking the wires off, things like that. But all in all, this is very neat and very tidy and very easy installation. So now there's really power on that Molex plug that says there is. I should be able to turn this on and we should be able to get an indicator light up here. And we do, we do have an indicator light up here on. So now that means the solenoid should be ready to, uh, to click. One solenoid, other solenoid. So good, at least that thing's gonna work. All we gotta do now is get some oil flowing through them and get it hooked to something on the front of the loader. But unfortunately that's gotta wait a little bit because uh, I've got nothing except for the loader and the, the quick attach bucket to go on the front. So this is all in preparation for whenever I get some attachments or an attachment. But the main thing that I'm concerned about obviously is going to be a grapple because a grapple has been on my radar for a number of years. The time is getting short and uh, hopefully it's going to work whenever it gets here. I would have to say that until I get the components to put onto the front end to operate, that's about all there is to do on this one here. I tried to be as specific as possible about some of the small details that a lot of people kind of uh, get mixed up on. A lot of times you get lost in the minutia of trying to figure out what abbreviations are, what uh, fittings are that they're talking about. Um, if you're not lucky enough to have anything to do at all with hydraulics, it can be a bit daunting to figure out the sizes and all that stuff, you know. But once you get yourself a little bit familiar with them and lay everything out like I did on that table, so if no other thing, you can just count the number of fittings of a certain style that you have and then look for the part numbers that coincide with that number that you have and you can work backwards that way and kind of simplify things sometimes. Doesn't always work that way but a lot of times it does. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that one here. That's about all I got to say about it for now. And this is Trackman44 and I'm out of here guys. I gotta go find the missus man, it's just about lunchtime.